Good morning. Can you all hear me? Um, my name is Tanya DePass, and I started the why, uh, why I Need Diverse Games hashtag. I'm wearing my shirt. Um, so today's talk is going to talk about diversity in gaming and why we need it. Um, Ash already covered it, but if you want to tweet pictures, that's totally fine with me. The one thing I do ask is if you must tweet about it, please do not use Gamergate with or without the hashtag because they name search. They will be in your mentions, my mentions, and I'm already blocking well over like 20,000 people, so please do not use the hashtag. I will use Death Eaters if I have to discuss them because I'm that nerd. Um, so I'm not going to read slides at you because we've all been at presentations where someone has read literally every slide to them. Hopefully we'll have time for questions, but please be respectful of everyone's time and do not stand up with a soliloquy or, you know, your hot take or your, you know, one point you have to make about something I've said. I'll be here all day. If you want to talk to me, I'm more than happy to do so. So how did this all start? Um, that is the first tweet I used with the hashtag. And thanks to Mickey, who has like umpteen thousand followers <laughs> tweeting it, and other folks, it took off and became this thing of a Tumblr, a Twitter, its own Twitter, I should say, Facebook page, etc. cetera. Um, and it came from a place of irritation and a slow burn about gaming, because I've been gaming a long time, and I got really tired of, you know, we were inches from having women in our game that Far Cry 4 said, or Ubisoft going, oh, we just can't animate women after several games with women in them, especially one with a female lead. Um, there are other issues for women, um, women of color, and there's another reason I got really tired of this, because this is like every video game protagonist ever. So thankfully, when I started this conversation, a lot of people were willing to take up the mantle, they kept the discussion going, and that's how we wound up here today. Um, it's important, I'm not the first person to talk about this. Mondra Ayer spoke about this at GDC in 2014, and other people have done so at previous conferences. So I'm just keeping the conversation going. So, interestingly enough, someone in 2009 did a survey or virtual census of game characters. And not of the people playing them, but of the actual game characters. And they found, big shock, that 85 89.5% of video game characters were male and white. Um, only 10.5% are female. And there's a very, very small amount of characters that are black, biracial, or Asian. And if Native American or other ethnicities were counted, they came in at under 1%. So this data reaffirms what we already know, which is video game protagonists are primarily white, and that minority protagonists are not really out there. This data is six years old, however, I don't know if they plan to do another census fairly soon. Um, one interesting tidbit of data that I found going through this and trying to write this talk is that someone actually put together a wiki list of how many black video game characters there are, and there's only 123. You know, gaming is almost 30 years old. There should be more than 123 characters of color. Um, so knowing that the digital landscape is very pale, it makes you wonder about who is it that's actually gaming. Luckily, there are up-to-date numbers on gender and age of players, but not um, racial makeup, thanks to ESA annual report, which the 2015 report is already out. And that covers a lot of information except race. From this year's report, women make up 44% of the gaming audience and average at about 43 years old, which makes me really happy because I'm like that close to 43. Um, men, while men, while making up a bigger number of gamers, came in younger at 35 years of age on average. So you have to wonder, if all these women are playing games, where are the female protagonists? Well, that's a good question. Um, we know about Lara Croft. You know, if you've played Mass Effect or any other Bioware game, you op often have the option to have a female character as your lead versus always being defaulted to a white male. There's Ellie from The Last of Us and other leading ladies. But it's still very uncommon to have a woman character in the lead. Um, you know, for instance, Remember Me had Nillen, which was a mixed race woman of color, as a lead 
in that game and Don't Nod got all these kudos and accolades and it was like, oh my god, there's a woman protagonist and she's not white. Um, so this should not be the standard, should not be the, I'm sorry, the exception to the rule. Well, the industry did better a little bit at this year's E3. Um, for those of you that have played Dishonored, there's Dishonored 2 coming out and the woman in the trailer was a character from the first game and so she's the lead. There's also Mirror's Edge follow-up which has the same protagonist and is Catalyst coming from EA and Rise of the Tomb Raider which brings Laura Croft back but in a much darker and grittier sense than we've seen her before. But, you know, that's gender issues. There's also race issues. Bethesda really missed a chance this year to do better because while they showed a black male protagonist when they went through the character creator at E3 and then they went through um, choosing a, a woman character, they went back to the same white dude for the demo. You know, they, they could have used the guy that they went through all the trouble of creating during the demo. Um, and I was really excited about Fallout until they started actually showing that. Um, so the minor race fail that was Bethesda, and EA, Bethesda at E3 isn't as bad as some of the things that we've seen. And I have to use some adult language because um, thanks to Sharif, wherever Sharif is sitting, um, has anyone played Battlefield Hardline? Yes, no, crickets. Um, because Battlefield Hardline uses the word motherfucker more times in one five minute clip that Sharif posted than I've heard an entire Bernie Mac skit in my life. I was just like, are you like watching stand-up or are you playing a game? So the other not so fun part of representation and when it fails is um, when it doesn't work out and Ash, I might need your help to get to the video clip. Where are you? So I apologize in advance for the racism in this clip. <laughs> it's only 45 seconds. How you doing, Letitia? Didn't think I'd see you walking this boulevard anytime soon, that's for sure. Not after what happened six months ago. People said you was down for the camp. People tend to underestimate me. <laughs> you and me both, Captain. You and me both. Uh, you, uh, got it. Crazy. I've got all the information I need. I'll be right here waiting for you, Captain. So, as we can tell, Sorry. that's okay. Technology has evaded me. Um, so, as we can tell, that representation matters on occasion. Um, so, as we can see, representation or attempts at it often fail. You know, I'd rather almost not have it than to have something like Letitia or Battlefield Hardline. Um, because someone actually wrote this, it made it in the game, and unfortunately she's voiced by a black woman. I hope they paid her a lot of money. Um, so, knowing that games are not always great at it, most of us know this, and a hashtag popped up not long after my off-world piece went up called Game So White. Because, well, if you played The Witcher, it's Witcher is white as white can be. And as you can see, there's one character that you encounter who is brown and she's not human. Um, but all the characters you encounter, all the humans you encounter are white. And, you know, the, the rallying cry from people who are opposed to diversity is historical accuracy. Well, I didn't know that there were griffins in Poland back then. So, you know, it kept going and then Turek Musa wrote a great piece in Polygon about not just The Witcher 3, but Rust and gaming's race problem. And Sidney Fussell also wrote a piece on leaving characters of color out is not neutral because we exist. We're all sitting here right now. So a choice to not have people of color and LGBT representation, disability representation, means you are not being neutral in your game's um, creation. Speaking of Rust, has anyone here played Rust? 
So I tried to play it. It wasn't my, wasn't my jam. But the thing about Rust is everything is randomly generated from your gender, your skin tone, everything. And people would rather have not played the game than to take the chance they might have to play as black dude, which is really sad. Um, one person on Steam said that I was going to buy it today, but I'm a white guy, and I don't want the chance of playing a black character. And then someone else called it forced politics. Well, you know, I didn't really get a choice with this. You know, you can play the game, turn it off, and go on about your day if you're a white dude. I don't get that choice. So it's one of those things where I'm glad they did it, but it really showed the ugly side of gaming when people would rather not, you know, buy a game than the off chance they might get a black dude. So, you know, it makes you wonder about the people that are playing games with you, because it is an open world game. You do have to interact with other people. And when I tried it for a little while, there were a lot of guys running around that were brown-ish. So it, it creates you based off your Steam profile. But representation does matter. And you know, for a lot of people, it's an awesome thing. And these tweets were, you know, I was given permission to use these tweets. So the first one is the little girl from home and the little girl who looks like her and looks so excited. And that just shows you how much it matters. I wish I'd had this as a little girl because, I mean, I saw the movie and I cried. But the, the grin on her face, if you could see, if you're in the back and can't see it clearly, she just looks so happy that someone looks like her in a movie. Um, and then the other, other three tweets are from friends of mine who are Asian and actually were like, hey, it's hard for us to be seen in these games. And they asked, you know, one person asked me to tweet out a group shot they did of cosplay. And luckily, Bioware saw these tweets, and they were you know, excited to see fans that found something of themselves in the game. So obviously, in a game like a Bioware game, where you can make yourself sort of, because I can't have hair like this, it matters. And you know, letting companies know that you want more of that is, is a big deal. OK, so this is like literally me squeeing for a moment, because I, I did not care about Mafia games. But the third Mafia game was announced and the trailer came out just a couple days ago and Lincoln Clay is a mixed race black dude and it's set in 1968 Louisiana and he's a Vietnam vet and this just made me so excited and it's just an example I had of how a game could make me want to play it because of representation. Because I didn't care about Mafia. I played Mafia 2 for like an hour and put it down. So I'm really excited to see what happens. Hopefully they don't mess it up. Hopefully they um, you know, don't fail with it but the trailer is pretty awesome. It is age-gated, so if you do go look it up later, you have to put in your date of birth, and it is kind of violent, so just be aware of that. So to kind of wrap this up and leave time for questions, what can we do to diversify gaming? Uh, <laughs> oh, I went back a slide by mistake. So if anyone in here makes games, writes for games, writes you know, articles aside from me, get out of England. Please get out of faux England. It has been, you know, played to death. Go to Egypt, Asia, South Africa as a basis for games. This is, you know, not hard to do. It does, takes a little research, but you can do it because historical accuracy is a lie. Um, and it's also a way to be really lazy in your storytelling because there aren't Jin in ancient Poland that I'm aware of, but hey, they're in The Witcher and historical accuracy. Um, if you are in a position to hire, um, you, Use resources at blackgamedevs.com, started by um, Kat Small and Sean Alexander Allen, is a good resource that is being created and updated daily. It's a listing of black game devs, so, you know, we're out here. There's not a reason not to have a diverse workforce. If you are creating, don't be afraid to fail. Write the other. There's plenty of resources on writing the other. There's plenty of resources you know, called people that you can go, I wrote this character, can you please look at it and make sure I'm not being offensive? Because I would rather, or anyone else would rather you did that than have something like Letitia. Um, and that said, don't be afraid to mess up. Everyone's going to mess up. You're going to get something wrong. There's going to be something you didn't think about. Um, and if you are a gamer and you see something that's faily, please speak up. You know, be respectful because with months of Death Eaters always in everyone's mentions on Twitter, game devs are probably not going to be very receptive to someone who is, you know, screaming and yelling at them or telling them how terrible they are because they messed up something. Um, 
because I really don't want another Letitia or um, Battlefield, AKA MedPack motherfucker. And lastly, just this is the mission that we have to diversify gaming. I'm not gonna read all of it to you, but you know what we want to do is make the gaming space safe again, make it more inclusive, and by and in doing so, give people a chance to you know talk about their projects, write guest posts, and hopefully grow up into an actual organization one day. And a very very distilled version of our statement of purpose that's on the site. So. The purpose of our work is to provide a safe space for gamers of color and other marginalized identities, provide a safe space to promote the work of creators in the industry, to encourage and defend diversity and fight for it, and to assist POC, LGBTQIA, and other marginalized creators financially when possible. Um, so diversity is a way to enrich the gaming experience and is not a quota to be filled or a tool to avoid criticism. It is an agenda, but that agenda is to be seen as fully human, both in the digital space and in and in meat space. And it's essential not just to reflect the variety of our community, but also to push the limits of immersion, present audience with a perspective that they have never experienced before, and ultimately to foster empathy for others. And I will end with a word of thanks and a picture of Monver Era Bioware, who made me very happy by wearing this shirt and tweeting about diversity in games on the 10th anniversary of being in the industry. So I'm not sure how much time we have for questions. Okay, so we have two and a half minutes. Questions? Is everyone awake? <laughs> the question I got was what game did it best? You mean in terms of diversity, just in general? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, right now, I would have to give 50-50 credit to Inquisition. The positive 50% is for Krem, which is one of the characters, and they actually, you know, did talk to a trans person to, to get feedback and make sure they were not being, you know, not inclusive. Um, fail would be Witcher 3, as much as I like the game, as much time as I've put into it, it is a very, very white game and fails in that. Okay, for those of you that didn't hear Taylor, so Rust has had an update and you can now play as a woman, but it's based off your Steam profile and once you create that character, you are locked in. You cannot go back and re-roll. So apparently that was a big issue for folks and they're unhappy. There's a very simple thing, just don't go buy the game. Protesting is not gonna make them take it down. Any, anything else before I turn over the mic? Yes, no. Well, thank you so much for your time.